medical decision making. This is from one of our Blitz video customers. Hello, very helpful EM video, but I noticed that you didn't emphasize to write the CMS risk data table for MDM in the CPT book. Is it because there's a simpler way to figure out the level of MDM, or is it because the level of examination and determining the PFSH are the only things you need to figure out the correct code? So e &M coding has evolved on the board exam. Um, the, the CMS risk, I put a hyperlink here to show you what that looks like. This is the table of risk. And yeah, if you want to write that in your manual, go ahead. You can write anything you want in your manual. You cannot print this and tape it. That is not allowed. Um, the reason why I don't recommend it is because um, there is a table that I believe that they will use more on the board exam. So let me show you now that I got my document to camera working. Yay! What I teach my students or those that um, purchase the e &M CEU webinar is to locate your hem and time is my little, little rhyme here. So where's my little pointer? Okay. Well, I have my nails done so I can use my fingers. <laughs> um, okay. So you have um, locate your hem and time. So H is history, E is exam, M is medical decision making. So on the board exam, your job is trying to pull out that information from the note. What you know? What is what is the level of history? What is the level of exam? What is the level of um, medical decision making? So this questioner is asking specifically about the MDM. So. On this page three, what I've done is I've written in some tables that I do encourage you to write, okay? But the medical decision-making table is actually a copy of what's already in your manual on page 10, okay? So let me show you just so that you see it with your own peepers. All right, so here it is printed in the manual, okay? And so what I did is I just drew some columns. Okay, so it's real clear that we're dealing with three separate pieces to medical decision making. We've got the DMO piece, diagnoses and management options. We've got the data piece. And then we've got the risk piece. So this risk piece is when you do, medic, when you do auditing, chart auditing, they use that table of risk that I just showed you. And that backs into these levels. That's getting to the nth degree of difficulty. And it's my experience that they don't do that on the board exam, unless they've recently changed. Um, they, they might not tell you it's straightforward, low, moderate, or high, which we wanna you know, do to, to put into my little locate your hem and time technique, but they might tell you it's limited DMO, it's moderate data, and it's low risk. And then you need to pull those pieces together using this table that already exists in the book. So this table is saying two of three. So you can have, and I got that from right here, right in the guidelines. It says to qualify for a given type of decision making, two of the three elements must be met or exceeded. So if you had a, I forgot what I said, if you have a limited, moderate, low, you can throw out one of them but the limited and low is gonna bring you down to a low complexity. Now, if I said limited, moderate, moderate, then we can throw out the limited because it's two of three that we need to meet or exceed. So moderate, moderate, it's a moderate complexity, okay? So for the risk, we don't need to use that detailed table. We can just use the table they give you in the CPT manual. Now, if you're gonna become you know, an e &M auditor, yes, you need to know the table of risk. You need to have that handy as a reference tool. If you're going to take the EM specialty exam, which I'm doing the end of September, by the way, so wish me luck, <laughs> um, then you can bring in those reference materials. You don't have to write in your book. You're allowed to actually bring it in. So um, keep that in mind. And so this table, now we can see minimal, low, moderate, high. So this is just getting even more detailed, more granular. 
you do not need that for the CPC board exam. Um, if you do, then I'll eat my hat. And if you do, it would probably be one of the 10 questions. Um, and I still, I still doubt it. I have not heard that that's, that's been happening. That would be like having to learn VIR coding, vascular interventional radiology to take the CPC exam. They might ask you some things about the families of arteries, but they're not going to, you're, you're not being tested on being a super detailed coder in every single specialty. They want you to have a broad base of knowledge. Get more CPC exam tips, coding certification training, and CEU credits. Go to www.codingcertification.org.